big announcement that some of you may love and some of you may hate. As you guys know, I wanted to do some powerlifting meet in March, but after my bench progress tonight, I decided I am no longer going, I think, no longer going to be competing in March. Come and stop And that is because Wait, I, just I, got a tiny little violin cap. I am going to go on a little baby bulk. All right, welcome back. You're watching days three and four of my current split, which is going to call for back squats, front squats, glute ham raises, and incline dumbbell rows, AKA Campbell rows, and also having a little bit of fun with my boy Max Tuning. It's only been like three episodes in and he's already pulled out of the meat. Now I'm glad his family doesn't like to pull out normally, otherwise Max might not be here. Burn, Max, burn. But anyways, what you're watching here is my back squat day. So this is a strength oriented day. And I said days three and four of my program. And it's interesting because when you guys eventually see how I'm programming all these things, you will see I actually have more of a five day ish split. And I say ish only because the fifth day is optional. And these days I don't really look at it necessarily as a split. And what I mean by that is for the longest time I had problems with programs because I'd miss a day here and there. Maybe I was sore. Maybe I didn't want to do legs. Maybe I was hungover in my younger days. But for one reason or another, I was always doing these routines that if you missed one day, I literally felt like my whole week was wasted because what was I going to do? Was I going to push everything back a week, which would throw off my whole training schedule? Would I just skip that day and come back to it another day? Whatever it may be. So for this particular program, how it's set up traditionally is two days on, one day off, two or three days on, and then one or two days off on the weekend, depending on how I feel. So that fifth day is optional, usually will include some type of bodybuilding movement. And I'm showing you just days one, two, three, and four for this first part, because I'm not sure if I'll always have this fifth day in. And what I'll do for that is like bicep curls or maybe even calves, who knows, might get a little bit freaky. Just basically a way for me to get in the gym and still do some work, yet not really affect my other programming. And because it's set up that way, depending on if you work out that fifth day or if you just want to do two days on, one day off, two days on, one day off and repeating, over the course of several weeks, you'll actually find this program doesn't take as long as it would be if you took the recommended rest time. So it's really based off of feel. You guys know how I love them feels. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting in that aspect. I just find it's better that way because if you miss a workout, no big deal. You just do the next one in line anyways without necessarily pushing anything too far off. So you saw my back squats there. That actually moves fairly well for me. I was supposed to do 440, but on my strength days, which is a day like this, I give myself the opportunity to push myself a little bit further. So instead of doing 440 for three sets of three, I did 455. So really proud with that. Then I moved on to front squats here, three sets of five with 315. And these were a lot more difficult than I wanted them to be. Wouldn't that always be the case in most cases, but they still went up. And again, getting up half the battle can't get old of ever saying that. From there, we moved on to three sets of 10 of glute ham raises, and I suck at these. If you are better at these, you can do these weighted, but I really struggle with them. One of the things I find help, as you see right here, is I actually put my hands on my hamstrings. Well, first my ass, because I need to fill them glutes to make sure that they actually exist. But I find I get a better range of motion here. Plus, just feeling my hamstrings working really gives me peace of mind, which is really huge in my aspect because I'm a fragile little girl in most cases. So I'm still working on getting better at these. And one of the things that I don't like, even though I am appreciative that they have a glute ham raise machine, is the fact that the foot plate's very small. So I wish it was a little bit longer. I've seen people actually go and modify them to make them better. From there, I I wanted to get some type of pulling movement in, so I did some incline dumbbell rows. Just four sets here, 15 reps each, just using 80 pounds, and I'm trying to implement more pulling movements overall. For the most part, almost every day, I have some sort of pulling movement. Maybe nothing heavy necessarily, but I'd like to get some more pulling movements in just to up the overall volume and really work on my back some. Now for these, I know I'm only showing you a little bit of the assistance work. If you wanna see the actual sets and reps of everything, including warmups, you can follow me on Fitocracy, which is linked in the description box below. But the next day I did my bench day, which is also a little bit interesting. So the, for the first run through of this program that I created, I had this dedicated as my overhead press day because I wanted to set up something similar to Wendler 531, where you have four main days based off of bench, deadlift, squat, and overhead press. And the problem was is, although I somewhat enjoy overhead press, even though you never see it, I was more concerned with getting more overall bench volume in. So what I started to do was I started to do bench work after my overhead press on this particular day. And then eventually I got to the point towards the end of that first 12 weeks where I said, you know what? I really just wanna focus more on bench since that's actually something I'll be competing in in these meets. 
So I, now I prioritize my bench movement first. So I still have my overhead press movement for this day. It follows the same template that the rest of the program does. So it mimics whatever I do on deadlift day, in this case, speed work. But I put all my bench work first. So in this case, I did five sets of two with 315, just touch and go. Try to work with some heavier weight and get some volume in, hence all the sets. But I really found my bench to be improving and I really credit it to this. So the only thing I'm really struggling on as far as the program setup goes for this particular day is finding the exact specification that I wanna do because my other bench day follows specific protocols. This day is more just based off of feel, which again, as I've already stated, all about them feels. From there, we moved on to some incline barbell press. And this is something I've been trying to implement more because I really have no upper chest. I wanted to do sets of eight here. Wasn't sure where I was gonna really start with this. So I started the first set of 185. And then from there, we bumped up to 205. Again, I wasn't really sure what to expect as being heavy considering I did 315 before this, which for me is very heavy. And this weight actually moved really well. I was surprised at how fast this was moving. So I was very pleased at this. So another set of eight right here with 205. And from there, I decided to strap on some more wheels and go for 225. And in the past, after benching, this is something that I typically struggle with. I don't think I usually get more than five or six reps here after already doing some heavy flat bench presses, but this set of eight also went very well. So I was very happy with that. I probably credit it to the terrible outfit I'm wearing. You see the blue hat and the blue wraps, but you're also seeing that maroon super training dat TV shirt. And what you can't see unless you follow me here on Instagram are my sand colored Reebok power shoes with some black and gray camouflage socks. Yes, very terrible. So after that bench volume, we did move on finally to the overhead press day and it wasn't really too bad because just six sets of two at 120 done for speed. So again, nothing overly impressive here. I didn't even want to put the weights on the screen. Finally, after this, we moved on to one of my favorite tricep exercises. And for me, it always seems like my favorite exercises always look so bad. So you saw the incline dumbbell rows before. And for this, I sit on my foot only because I want to get higher up on the bench, which is set at an incline, just so the actual dumbbell does not hit the top of the bench because I have that problem all the time. But I really like this angle. It gives me a good contraction in my triceps which are very lacking because I have no arms and I don't often train them. Hence why I added that fifth voluntary day, which I primarily just do arm work on. So there you go. As always, thanks for watching and stay big. Now it's interesting when you talk about speed work because a lot of people point out that it's not really beneficial or hasn't been shown to really do much of it.